Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, I'm going to install N1MM Logger Plus. This is my favorite contest logging software. Now previously, we installed the N3 FJP package. That went in lickety split, no problems at all. We entered a handful of fields for information, and we're pretty much up and running literally seconds after we got that going. The nice part about the N3 FJP software is that it is dedicated and written strictly for field day. There's no extra stuff to worry about. If it doesn't have anything to do with field day, it doesn't exist in the package. Now, on the other side, N1MM is capable of doing thousands of contests. If you don't have a contest file for it, you can make your own. And there's tons and tons of community-supported contest files out there. That all being said, it also is free. And it is an extremely powerful piece of software. But with power comes work. And I have to tell you, it isn't that easy to get going with. But if you spend the time and spend the time to get it set up with your radio and all sorts of other things that make it a very feature-filled program, you will be rewarded. That said, let's go ahead and watch the install. All right, everybody, we're going to install N1MM Plus, best contest logging software, in my opinion, that's free. So let's get started. I'm AG6AG, and to get this all going, I'm going to launch the Chrome browser, and I am going to type in N1MM, November 1, Mike, Mike, and just hit enter. And the top that should come up on your browser, if you're using Google, is n1mmwp.hamdocs.com. This is the site for the N1MM Logger Plus. Now, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and bookmark this site. Reason being is there's all sorts of amazing information having to do with using this program at more elaborate levels than I am going to show today. Uh, also, it talks completely about operating all the supported contests as well as supported radios if you want to do um, cat control. So there's a lot of info on here. And if you do start using this software, well, you're going to be wanting to look at that info. So I'm going to go to download files to program files, and I am going to grab the full install. Up at the top, I'll click here like it's telling me to, and I'm going to download the one that is the newest, which uh, right now it's the full installer. It says 1.07711. To be honest with you, it's the most current full installer that they have up on the net. Once you get this installed, it's going to ask you to update. Some things to remember about this software is it updates a lot because it handles literally thousands of contests and it updates those contest definitions all the time but we'll go into that a little bit later let's go ahead and click on download we're going to download the install i'm going to save it into my downloads folder on my pc here and there it is waiting for uh, the antivirus to finish up and say i can go ahead and run it and it's done. It's indicating with that little flashing circle that it's set to go. Before I install this, I want to make sure everybody understands something. N1MM is only good for contests. This is not a very good daily logger. If you want something to log when you're out there uh, running HF and uh, making uh, contacts just arbitrarily, no contest involved, no scoring, this is not the logging software for you. The one that I prefer to use is called Log4OM. Stands for Log4 Old Men. 
Uh, excellent piece of logging software. I recommend highly that you uh, give it a try, uh, but that's a subject for another video. Now, normally I just click on this to run it, but in this case, I'm going to close this up and I'm going to go to my folders. I'm going to go to my downloads directory and I am going to run it from there. So we're going to double click it. It's asking me if I'm okay with installing it. I'm going to say yes. Up pops the install. Next, next, next. I'm going to take the default. Next. I'm going to take the default again. Next. And now we're installing. And then next. All right. So it's telling me I have to reboot my computer. Also, it may uh, ask you to reinstall a piece of software or to install a piece of software to work with this. That's not uncommon. Uh, but we'll go ahead and finish and reboot the computer. And we will get back on that in just a minute. All right, well, we're back from our reboot. Notice we have a couple new icons on our desktop. We've got the N1MM logger and we have the N1MM rotor. I don't have a um, big antenna that I need a rotor for, so I'm just going to delete this. Uh, but, you know, if you do have a tower with a uh, Yagi up there with a rotor, hey, this has the ability to remote control the rotor for you so it can all be tied in. In other words, you basically uh, click on a call sign and bada bing, bada boom, the rotor rotates, everything is done automatically. Of course, the only issue with that is that the uh, call areas are not really respected anymore. But that's, again, a subject for another video. So, well, so with all that, let's go ahead and launch N1MM. So the first question it's going to ask me is, do I want to convert an existing database or do I want to create a new one or open one? I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. We'll click OK. And it says, oh, reload of uh, the documents directory for support files. It had to do that. So now it's gone ahead and it's created the database. Now it wants me to configure my station. So the first question that it's asking me here is, well, do I want to allow private networks and public networks to be able to access this program? Right now the firewall is blocking features. This is your own call. If you plan on using this with other software and linking it all together, I recommend saying it's okay for it to act on both networks. Um, now, that's completely up to you. Um, but for the most part, all this does is it exchanges call information, QSO information with other programs via UTB, uh, UTP connection uh, on the local host port. Okay, so I don't worry about it, but again, your mileage may vary and you may not want to do that. All right, so now it wants me to name that database. Default is ham. You know what? That's fine. I could use ham, but uh, what the heck? Let me use my call sign. That sounds like a lot more fun. All right, now it wants my station set up. And here is the station setup info. So I'm going to go ahead and set the station up, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, well, we've got all the info in there. Next step is to say OK, and guess what? We're kind of up and running here. But it does say that our current version is 337 days old and we should do an update. All right. So a couple different ways to do that. But the easiest way, of course, is go to tools and tell it to, where is it? Check for new program version and install. That's what we're going to do. So it's going to go out. It says, oh, new version available. Would you like to install? Yes.
As of release, uh, blah, 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 this program includes features for anonymous configuration information. All right, well, I like this program. I'm going to let them get anonymous information for data collection to improve live clusters. You don't have to do that. You can click cancel. And guess what, folks? We are all set to go here. Now, I'll move this over a little. I'll move this over a little. Some things that we want to look at right off the bat is we want to take a look at some of the config that's available in here. And of course, our main config here is going to be hardware. We can hook radios, all sorts of other stuff, function keys. We can program those. We can set up our digital modes. Uh, let's see, uh, mode control. In other words, do we use the radio mode control? Do we follow the band plan? Um, we can list our antennas for different bands, things like that. Uh, score reporting. This is where you could actually send your scores up to a service to go ahead and report the scores. But I think we'll get into that in a different video. Uh, broadcast data. Remember when I talked about it listening on UDP ports and sending data on UDP ports? This is where you enable that to talk to different programs to send information. If you're using digital, you probably are going to need to uh, configure the sound card information. And of course, if you're going to use uh, FT8 or FT4 for field day, you're going to want to configure this. All these settings are there for you. I'm going to help you with those in a later video, but I want to show the folks that are just trying to get this up for, a, uh, um, for this event, for field day, how to do it as quickly as as possible and as easily as possible. So we've got this installed. Our next step, we're going to go to file and we're going to create a new log in the database. Now, remember when I talked about all sorts of contests? Look at this. All these are different contest defin definitions. Check this out. And you know what? State QSO parties have their own category that you would select on the other side. Let's see, uh, we'll look for QSO party. Where is it? There we go, QSO party. And then it opens up all of the state QSO parties that it has programming for. All right, so let's do what we plan to do though, and that is field day. So I'm gonna find FD, that's the field day code. Don't be intimidated by all these codes. Remember the website? It helps you look up what code to use for what contest. Now the start date, I don't think uh, field day starts on uh, May 2nd. Um, so let's fix that. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to click over here. And I'm going to say, all right, I know that field day is on the 4th full weekend of June. So this is the first full, the second full, the third full, the fourth full. It's going to start June 27th on Saturday at 1800 Zulu. So 11 a.m. in the morning local time on the west coast here. We'll go ahead and say okay. Now we're going to finish setting up our stuff. Well, I'm going to operate as a single operator. Um, I have all sorts of choices here. I'm going to work all bands. Power, I'm going to work low power. I'm going to work 100 watts or less. My mode, well, let's just set it for sideband right now, and I can always go in here, and I'll explain what this mode selection is, okay? It really has nothing to do with your log submission. I don't have an overlay. I don't think, no, nope, no overlay, although I am over 50, I don't think they care. My station is fixed, it's not a mobile or a portable. My, uh, am I going to assist it? And assist it is asking if I'm going to run a, a spotting network. So I am, you may not though. So uh, if you're not running assisted, you can put non-assisted here. Now I'll let you in on a little secret, there's no... Uh, different classification between assisted and non-assisted for field day. So you can set this to whatever you want. No additional time category needed. 
For transmitters, I'm going to just put uh, unlimited, okay? Uh, and for my exchange, the reason I select unlimited is I am a two echo because I'm going to have two active transmitters that I'm using. Yes, folks, I am going to have a dedicated VHF radio that operates completely independently and can be simultaneously transmitted on. So I'm out there for all the newbies out there that are technician class that want to try to get some QSOs. I'll be listening on the national calling frequency on 146.520 along with a dedicated group of guys in Ventura County that are going to be out there listening for you too. More information on that will come out in your local club emailing list if you're in Ventura County. So look for that. Anyway, guess what? I filled in all the questions. I'm not going to put a soapbox, but I can later. I'll show you how to go back in and enter, uh, edit this, but there we go. All right. Now you notice since I selected SSB only, all I have here is phone, right? Showing the different bands. So if I had a selected all three, so I can now open a log. So if I go to field day, I have to make sure that I fix the things that it tries to change on me. But uh, from here, I can go ahead and say, all right, well, I want to see more than that. I'm going to run Oh, I'll just do SSB, CW, and digital. And I'll go ahead and click OK, making sure all this is correct. And look, now I have all three. I have CW, phone, and digital. Now, how is this going to help me? I'm going to be able to see here what different bands I've got bonuses for and stuff like that. I can also edit this. If I right-hand mouse click in here, I can change the band panel. Uh, so for HF, I mean, I'm really only going to be on 80, 40, uh, 20, and probably 15. I'm not going to be on 10. VHF, I'm actually going to be on 144. Uh, so let's go ahead and exit. And what you're going to see now is you're going to see the bands that I'm actually going to be working. All right. Cool, right? So there's a couple things that I need to do, though. Um, remember, we had to select our uh, band and our mode. Well, the easiest way to do this, I can either click on phone 20, right? And that's going to be the band and mode that I'm set for. I can do 40, and you see what happens up here? It changes up here. It goes to um, one of the areas in the band for frequency. Uh, if I went to 40 digital, of course, it's going to change to 40 digital RTTY. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do. Rather than do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in here the frequency that I'm going to be on, which is going to be, let's say, uh, let's do 20 meters, 14250, center of 20 meters. If I hit enter, it's going to change over to that frequency, but it's still going to say RTTY. So how am I going to get rid of that? Well, I'm going to be using upper sideband. Boom. Look at that. It changes it to upper sideband and immediately moves it over to phone. What could be easier than that? Now, let's say I'm making that contact with uh, AB6ET again, right? Well, he's running one delta. I'm doing my exchange. I'm giving him the exchange of uh, two echo. And then I'm moving over here. He is also Santa Barbara. Boom. I'm done. It's in here. I've got it right here. And that was my last contact. There's a ton of other windows that we can open on this. The ones that are important to me may not be important to you. The next video is going to have all the windows that I like to have open on it, and I'm going to show you how to interface this with your radio. But for right now, the only window that I'm going to show you that I think is going to be something that you're going to want to see for sure is I think you are going to want to go down here and see the summary. Let's see, where is score summary? There it is. And this is going to give us the summary of all the scores I've made on 14 USB. I've made one QSO, right? One point, one point per Q, 
My score is 2 because I have one multiplier. Okay, right down here. That easy, guys. It's not hard. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, please, let me know if you have any questions. This is Stu, AG6AG73, and back to you. Well, what'd you think? I happen to like this software a lot, but it is a bit more work to get going. What I will tell you, though, is if you bother to set up all the fantastic features that are available in N1MM, you will be rewarded. You'll get higher scores and have an easier time when you go to post those scores to the contest. Anyway, next couple videos are going to cover some more elaborate things, and they're all wrapped around preparation for field day in these hard times. Till then, 73 from AG6AG. Back to you.